Hi everybody, this is Oksana. Today we're going to be making this fun statement ring. So there's going to be two options. You can kind of stop once you do the stone portion or you can continue and add these little embellishments to make it even more statement-like. So if you want to see how I made this ring, just keep watching. So we're going to be using 19 gauge wire. This is square copper wire and I want the ring to be sturdy. That's why I'm using 19 gauge. And I'm going to use three pieces of the wire. And they measure about 19, 19 inches. My stone is an Iolite sunstone and it is fairly big stone for a ring, kind of small stone if you're thinking pendant. It's a little bit less than an inch or in millimeters, it's about 22 millimeters and it's an oval shape. So you just want to decide what size ring you want to make. So I want to make about a nine and you put your measuring tape. Mine has been slightly chewed up by my dogs. <laughs> you put it around the size that you want, except I make it just slightly bigger because what happens is um, once we put some of the wires around the ring band to secure it, it makes it a little bit tighter on the inside. So Basically, this is your wires and you want this to be in the middle. So if you kind of find the middle of your wires and then you place this kind of like this to determine each um, end. So this whole bit sits in the middle. So I tried to mark, you probably can't see, but I tried to mark the edges with a Sharpie here. So I know where to start and where to end and I'm using some half round copper wire. This is 18 gauge, so it's quite thick. You can use a thinner gauge. That is not a problem. Um, but this is gonna make the whole thing look kind of more chunky and it's going to just be very strong and durable. And that's the thing about rings. This is why I don't make a lot of rings. I do have a few ring tutorials, but most of my tutorials are pendants. So I'm just wrapping it around, turning the piece, guiding the wire with my hand. Because pendants can easily be earrings. You just make two pendants and attach earring hooks to them. So basically all my pendant tutorials are also like earring tutorials in a way. Um, but when it comes to rings, I'm just gonna press on that a little bit because my wires are starting to not be as flat up against each other over there. There we go, that fixed it right up. So I'm gonna continue until I get to my mark, which is there. That looks way too short. Oh, it's there, okay. Um, with rings, I just worry because this wire is meant to be bent and manipulated with our hands and so a ring made out of this wire yes it will be you know a little bit sturdy but I feel like if you really try hard to squish the ring you can and so I just worry about the durability of rings so that's why I don't make them very often but I think this ring is gonna be one of my more durable rings because it uses thicker wire more wires and then this ring band made with thick wire as well will be nice and sturdy, which we kind of have to do in this case too because our um, stone is quite big. So you want a nice, stable, sturdy ring for such a large stone. So I'm just gonna keep going and um, do this off camera because it's just very, very repetitive. So what you wanna do is you wanna stop when you get really close to your mark and you're about like four wraps away from your little mark, you wanna stop. Um, and I'll show you why we need that little extra space in a second. 
but first what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim off this little wire end here but I'm not trimming off this wire this wire is still connected to the spool I am leaving it alone for now so I'm trimming that little wire end I'm pressing it down so when we bend this we want this wire end here facing us so that it does not end up on the inside of the ring where it could scratch. But here it's gonna get covered up. So I'm bending around my ring mandrel. The ring mandrel is kind of weird because it has this little bump here. I think it's meant for beads. So now I kind of turn because I don't want to bend where the bump is because that's gonna mess up the shape. So I'm just bending around that size nine that I'm trying to do. It's probably gonna end up a little bit smaller. All right, so once you've bent it, our mark was pretty close. What you wanna do now is take this wire, cut yourself several inches. I just cut myself a nice long piece like this because what you wanna do is you wanna wrap it around both of these to connect. So, so far this is very standard um, wire wrapped ring technique. A lot of my other rings use the same technique as well. What's gonna be really different about this ring is gonna come when we are setting the stone. So I'm wrapping this around. You can just press on it as well. Just grab my pliers here, press on it as you're doing it. And you want this to be the thickness of your stone. So let me just check. Okay, so it can be a little bit thinner than your stone as well. Just roughly somewhat similar, maybe a little smaller than the thickness of your stone. All right, so there we go. I'm just gonna trim that now, and I'm just pressing down on it. So this kind of moves. So you wanna move it tight so you don't have a gap like this. You wanna move it tight, and after you move it tight, you wanna bend these wires kind of just to the side like this, and that's gonna lock it in place from moving because the wires don't move now. All right, and these wires as well. We're just gonna take them, they're all together in a little bunch. We're just gonna kind of bend them this way. All right, so now we're gonna take our stone. I'm sorry about the background noise. My um, neighbor is like mowing the lawn or something. <laughs> just my luck. So if you put your stone in here, you have the wires on either side and then just try to center it this way as well, you know, so it's not like that. Try to kind of center it and then we have these wires and we're just gonna press them up against the stone and you wanna just bend these around the edge, the perimeter of your stone. So this is one set of wires there and here we have another set of wires. I'm gonna show you another trick to stabilize your stone further. So there's my stone. So one thing that can make it a little wobbly with big stones is that you have a lot of the stone here and here and it's not really sitting on anything. So it can kind of move down here, if you see that. So if you just form something, a ledge for this stone it's going to stabilize it further. So I like to just take this bottom most wire on each side and I like to just make a little loop with it like this for the stone to sit on. And then I finish the loop by bringing this wire back together with these three wires here. 
and I'm just going to do that on the other side as well. So once you have the wires, they're going from one edge to the other edge here. Once they reach here, I like to make a few more loops to extra secure the stone. The stone is secured because these wires are kind of on it. So make sure that they're not far away and the, they're like blocking the edge of the cabochon on either side. That'll help secure it. And then we're going to take this wire, inside most wire, and we're just going to make two loops. You can make one loop as well. I just like the look of a larger one and then a smaller one. I'm just going to try to bring these a little closer together like that. I think it looks cool when they overlap a little bit. So all we're going to do now is we're going to take the three wires. We're going to kind of bend them downwards like this. Be really careful. careful. Try not to get like a lot of... Um, kinks and bends into these wires so I just like to just gently curve them and put them through the ring itself and then you want to just make sure that they're not um, they're not getting loose they're staying tight here around the stone I'm just gonna pull them tight and then um, just bring them up like this. So they're wrapped all the way around and they're pointing back in the, their original direction. And now we're gonna do that with this side as well. So just gentle curve, tuck those little ends in there. Make sure it's tight around the stone, that it hasn't loosened or moved. Your stone is still very secure. And that they're not um, starting to like crisscross or get twisted up. So if you like the look of this ring and you wanted to make a more simple ring, you could cut the wire ends and just kind of tuck them away and make a ring that looks like this but as you saw in the beginning I am making a more complicated ring but that's how you would make a large stone kind of more basic type of ring so I'm just straightening these wires I don't want any bends or kinks in them another thing you can do is just grab your pliers and press on that bend that you have made just a little bit there just to tighten everything up and on the other side as well all right so now it's time to do the decorative bit so I'm gonna just pick a side to start with and what you want to do is just start making a curve with these three wires that follows the curve of the ring but kind of keeps a distance from the ring. Small distance. Small little gap like that. Now we're gonna take this innermost wire and there's different um, things you can do but basically we're making swirls 
So you can do a number of different swirls. You can just do one little swirl, whatever um, you like. Feel free to kind of experiment with this portion. But first, I'm just making a swirl like this. I'm actually going to tighten that up a little bit because I want it to be quite small because I want this next one to be larger. I want like a larger one in the middle and then I want another small one. So here's a little tricky bit. So for this next one, we're not going to swirl it in the same direction because then it's going to like, see how it's rising up and getting higher? We want it to swirl under here, I'll show you. So it looks like this, and now we're swirling it almost like here on this side. If you turn it and look at the underside of it when you're swirling it, then it's going to go the right way. You'll see what I mean in a second here. All right, so now if we look at that, instead of being kind of like raised up, if we had swirled this way, it's going under. I'm just trying to get them to be nice and even. Maybe this needs to be just a little bit smaller. All right, there we go. So now they're more equal because this wire kind of goes under this loop and then this wire here goes under. That's why we did it in that um, other direction. So now we just put this back because I had raised it up to make it easier. So we're just putting it back. It's kind of going to touch this little edge of the ring and then you want these other wires to follow it along so just adjust them as needed so that they follow it along and then they connect back together so the three wires are back together again and then they're gonna go here on this edge so let's take a look to see if that looks nice and even And then um, what I like to do is I cut the rest of them just as short as that one there because it's shorter since we did all the swirls with it. So I trim them all the same length and then I take them and tuck them through the ring band. And here they are coming out the other side. You can just kind of pull on them a little bit. And now we're going to see how that's looking to see if we need to adjust at all. All right, tighten that up. So it is going to be a little bit kind of further here since we have these wires than it is here. So you just have to kind of work with that and try to adjust things to, to make it look as even as possible considering it's not perfectly even or it can't be perfectly even because the spacing on one side is slightly different um, and then here on the inside we're going to trim these pretty short we're going to leave just the tiniest little end here so that I can turn the end away from the finger so when you wear the ring the wire ends will not touch you and we're gonna point them in the direction of these wires so one at a time here's the first one and then here's the second one and the third one you want to make sure that they stay in here and they don't come out to the outer part of it in that up. Now the wire ends are hidden away. You can't feel them. They're touching the inside of these wires. 
All right, so here's what that looks like. And all we have to do now is just do the same thing, but on the other side of our ring. So I'm just taking this wire and I'm making a little loop and then a bigger loop and then a little loop again but that loop I don't want to swirl it above I want to swirl it underneath so since last time I showed you you can just flip it over and do it I'll show you from this side so we're twirling it kind of to the back like that all right I think this is a little too big let me tighten that up perfect and another way that you could do this I'll show you here is you can do this wire first so this wire is going to go here if I look at it from the front I want it to just kind of touch this edge here like this then I'm going to bend it inwards, bend it through. Here it is coming on the other side. I'm going to trim it and leave it just the tiniest little end. I'm going to take that end, I'm going to point it in this direction towards the wire there and just press down on that. So that's another way to do it instead of bending all three wires. You can do this one first. Now it's locked in place and you can follow it along with these two wires. You could put swirls with these two wires as well if you wanted to add more swirls. So I followed it along. I'm going to kind of bend so I know where they need to be bent. Then I'm going to trim just kind of if you have it go across the ring band and then you trim they should fit through the ring band like that and now I'm just bending them checking how they look and then here we're going to do the same thing so we have both of these wires here. I'm just going to press it up against the ring band so I can cut it just a little bit higher. Just give myself a little tiny end there so that I can grab and point it towards these wires like that. And now this one. So grabbing that little wire end and pointing it towards these wires to kind of tuck it away. Just going to press on that this way as well just to kind of tighten it all up a bit. There we go. So it doesn't move. Now I'm going to just adjust this as needed so it's a little bit more centered and that's it that is this big statement ring oh and let's measure what size it ended up being because we've added some wires here on the edges mine was just barely a nine I believe when I was doing it so I think now it might be like an eight and a half no it's still a nine all right so that's good the sizing was accurate and here's what the ring looks like once it has been oxidized and I really like the way it looks. It brings out the texture. I know it looks kind of giant on my hands because I have tiny baby hands and my fingers are like a size 5 but it's a pretty um, decently sized statement ring but it's not as ginormous as it looks on me. Um, 
I also just wanted to add that if you press down nice and tightly here on these wires, that'll really prevent them from moving because if you don't do that, then it will be kind of like floppy and you can pull on this wire and it'll just kind of move around. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this fun little ring tutorial. If you did, please leave me a like down below. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. I post new tutorials every single weekend. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.